We've just entered the Christian quarter and uh, we're going to be heading towards the Holy Church of Sepulchre. Um, we've just been to the Western Wall, um, walked through some of the, the shopping areas and now we're just moving towards the, the Holy Church of Sepulchre. So let's have a look. The old city of Jerusalem is divided into four quarters, the Muslim, the Jewish, the Christian and the Armenian. And the Christian and the Armenian are essentially both Christian quarters. Here we are heading towards the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The area immediately to the south and east of the sepulchre was a quarry and outside the city during the first century as excavations have revealed. We are heading towards the church and which is part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Old City of Jerusalem. The Christian Quarter and the Armenian Quarter of the Old City of Jerusalem are both located in the northwestern and western parts of the Old City. Due to the fact that the Holy Sepulchre is located close to the northwestern corner of the Wall City, the adjacent neighborhood within the Christian Quarter is called the Muristan, a term derived from the Persian word for hospital. Christian pilgrim hospices have been maintained in this area near the Holy Sepulchre since at least the time of Charlemagne. And we have the Crusaders, who formed the Hospitallers, who were based here. Like the Templars were based on the Temple Mount, the Hospitallers were based by the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The New Testament describes Jesus' tombs as being outside the city wall, as was normal for burials across the ancient world, which were regarded as unclean. Today, the site of the church is within the current walls of the old city of Jerusalem. It has been well documented by archaeologists that in the time of Jesus the walled city was smaller and the wall was to the east of the current site of the church. In other words, the city had been much narrower in Jesus' time with the site than having been outside the walls. And this is where Jesus was crucified because it was considered to be outside the city. And as we shall see, there is a mountain and that particular mountain is considered to be the place where Jesus was crucified by the Romans. Along the way there, there are plenty of shops selling brilliant souvenirs and items relating to Christianity. From as early as the 4th century, Christians have been considering this as the holy site where Jesus was crucified. Originally, it was a simple structure which was then adapted and changed, especially during the time of Constantine, who saw a vision of the cross in the sky and became a Christian and sent his mother, Helena, towards Jerusalem, where this area was consecrated and a church was built, which was then rebuilt and remodeled. And what we see today are the remains and most of the renovations of the Crusader period. Here we are in the courtyard of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre as we entered from the Souk at the Bell. The stairs to the left lead to the St. Helena Road, to the right to the Chapel of the Franks. This area is known as the Parvis, it uh, leads to the entrance of the church. And located around here are a few smaller structures. The current courtyard is about 20 meters on each side. At one point in history, the courtyard of the Holy Sepulchre operated as a market and items were sold here. It is still a hive of activity and many swathes of the Jerusalemite population and tourists visit here. Today it is used for the service of the washing of the disciples feet and on Holy Friday this is one of the most liveliest places as mentioned. The courtyard uh, today is supported by a large vaulted cistern. The northern wall of this cistern is impressive and you can see some very large rocks and it is possible here that the uh, Temple of Venus stood, which was built by Hadrian, and Eusebius mentioned this, that prior to the tomb of Jesus being built here, there was a, a temple built by the Romans to Venus, which is interesting because the same Temple Mount, which we've seen many times, uh, after the destruction of the Jewish Temple, apparently, the Romans built a temple to Jupiter. In this holy church of sepulchre here where Jesus was um, crucified he was then um, it is this place where he was also then bathed and then he was buried 
before he was, according to the Christian tradition, taken up. Also in this church, there is the original cross upon which Jesus was um, crucified upon. There is also apparently the skull of Adam. Uh, they call it uh, Golgotha or something, or Jeladil. And uh, according to the Christian tradition, of course, the father, uh, the sin occurred. And then in order to expiate the sin, uh, Jesus was crucified on the cross. This is the most holiest place for Christians um, in the world. So, And the keys to this place are still kept by the Muslims. Because when the Muslims conquered Jerusalem, Umar, who came, the Caliph Umar, he prayed in the mosque, which is opposite. He did not pray near, although he was offered to pray near. But his footsteps, retracing them, he came here to see this place. And the Patriarch showed him this place before handing over the keys for Jerusalem. I'll show you now some sights around here. It's full of um, incense. You can smell the anointing oil. They use myrrh or frankincense or whatever. You can see all the other very, very, it has a real spiritual feel actually, even as a Muslim I feel it's a great sense of spirituality and Jesus is no ordinary individual. Um, so let's have a look. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre as we know it today is a remnant of the Crusader period mainly. From the entrance you begin by taking the steps that lead down to the north side to the Greek Orthodox Chapel of Adam in which where there is a cleft in the rock, the chapel gets its name from the legend that Adam's skull was found under the cross where Christ was crucified. On either side of the entrance are stone benches marking the site of the tombs of the two rulers of the Crusader Kingdom, Godfrey of Boulogne and Baldwin I, whose remains were removed by the Muslims and they are markers signifying their tombs. As you move into the Chapel of Calvary and the Chapel of the Holy Sepulchre heading west, you pass the Stone of Unction, on which Christ's body was said to be laid and anointed after his crucifixion, and the Armenian-controlled place of three Marys, where holy women watched the anointing. From here you arrive at the rotunda containing the Holy Sepulchre, Christ's tomb. The rotunda's exterior was rebuilt by a Smyrna Greek called Kalpha Komnenos after the 1808 fire and has a Turkish Rococo style. In front of the entrance are huge candelabra and over the doorway hang 43 lamps which are divided amongst different groups, 13 belonging to the Greek, Latin and Armenian churches while four belong to the Copt. The structure of the tomb conceals the natural rock, which can only be seen in the Coptic chapel to the rear of the sepulchre. In an antechamber, the angel's chapel is a stone on which the angel, who announced the resurrection of Christ to the holy women, is said to have sat. A low door leads into the small tomb chamber along the right-hand wall of which is a marble slab marking the empty burial place. Apart from the marble cladding, this tomb is similar to many others dating from the time of Christ, closed by a round millstone, whose diameter determined the height of the entrance. During the night before Easter Sunday, the Holy Sepulchre is the scene of the Church's most important annual ceremony. This is when the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem enters the Angel's Chapel, which has been closed since Good Friday, and lights the Holy Fire with the light from the darkness of the tomb symbolizing the Resurrection. Another part is the Chapel of the Copts and the Chapel of the Jacobites. On the south, west and north sides of the rotunda are semicircular conches. In the west conch, opposite the Coptic chapel is a chapel of Syrian Christians, Jacobites. In here on the left is the entrance to a rock-cut tomb. It is traditionally ascribed to Joseph of Arimathea, who also provided the tomb for Christ. It is still in its original condition, without marble cladding. The northern part of the rotunda belongs to the Latins. The major point of interest here is the chapel of the Franciscans, whose ferry is immediately adjoining, whose friary, and the altar of Mary Magdalene. In the northern aisle are a number of columns of different periods, including richly de decorated Corinthian columns from the original 4th century church. These are known as the Arches of the Virgin, because the risen Christ is said to have appeared to his mother here. At the east end of the aisle is a small square chamber known without any historical basis as the Prison of Christ. So this is the stone upon where Jesus' body, after being crucified, is laid. 
and Isa ibn Maryam according to the Christians was then washed and then he was buried and then he was taken away but uh, of course according to our tradition Jesus was not uh, he was there was a crucifixion but it was not Jesus because God had replaced that individual um, but let's proceed upstairs and let's have a look This is the mountain. So this is the very location where the Christians believe Jesus, his blood spilt on that mount. And this is the location when he was crucified, that his blood spilt on this mount. And of course, it has a huge significance and holiness to it that the sacred blood, according to them, of the Son of God was spilled. So let's proceed. Just at the place which is known as Axis Mundi. It is the place where apparently it is the center of the earth or according to the Christian tradition or whichever denomination it is. According to the Muslims though, the center of the earth is the Kaaba in Mecca. But similarly, Al-Aqsa Al-Sharif, the holy precinct, also occupies a very uh, central station and that potentially is known as the center of the earth also. And the very, where the Qubbatul uh, Silsile is the chain of the domes. They apparently say that has a, a significant um, sort of location in the earth. But according to the Christians, it's interesting because this is Al Ardul Mubarakah. Anyway, it is the land, uh, the blessed land, uh, whether it's for Jews, for Christians, and for Muslims, of course. Um, so, yeah, this is that location. And in front of me, of course, is the place where Jesus. Isa ibn Maryam, according to the Christians, Jesus uh, was buried and he then rose from the dead. after he rose so this was apparently where Jesus was buried and this is the empty tomb behind me where Jesus is supposed to have risen and been resurrected and and it contains an empty it, it is empty and uh, it is where apparently the final rising of Jesus occurred and before he came back so it's very very holy and uh, let's take a few pictures The location of the tomb of Jesus is a debated one. There are over a thousand rock-cut tombs in Jerusalem. 
Although the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the strongest candidate, it has been the most ancient and oldest place of worship for Christians. It was the place where the Romans built the Temple of Venus in the 2nd century when they conquered it to show their dominance, and they usually built in places of significance. It is the place also where you will find a old rock-cut tomb dating to the 1st century. But similarly, there is another place, which is known as the Garden Tomb, a popular evangelical choice. It is a beautiful spot recently discovered in comparison to the Church of the Sepulchre by a British general in 1842, and it was also spotted by Greek landowners looking for water. It does have some compelling aspects. Archaeology has confirmed it was an ancient garden for more than just flowers. A well, an underground cistern, and a wine press dating to the Second Temple period were all found here. Nearby, there is a sizable family tomb, chiselled out of bedrock. Inside the tomb, there are crosses found dating to the Byzantine period. Not far from here, there is an overlook. Although crumbling today, where visitors can notice a rock ledge, many say it looks like a face or a skull, perhaps marking the place of the skull that the scriptures speak of, especially when they say that according to the canonical texts of the Christians, which were written three decades after Christ, that it was the place of the skull, a rock-cut tomb near a garden. And as we know, according to history, it was Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy Jewish follower of Jesus, who provided the unused rock-cut tomb for Jesus. But there are many tombs in uh, and around Jerusalem. You can see the tomb of Absalom, you can see within the Mount of Olives and elsewhere there are many rock-cut tombs where Jesus could have potentially been buried. But the two strongest candidates are the Garden Tomb and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Although the Church of the Holy Sepulchre has the strongest evidence. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a snapshot of Jerusalem. Just as we have an Armenian, a Christian, a Muslim and Jewish quarter, similarly the small but significant building of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is divided amongst different Christian denominations, all vying for a piece of this small building, compared to the vast and large cathedrals you see in Europe and elsewhere. Under an 1852 mandate, the care of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is shared by no less than six Christian denominations. The Greek Orthodox, Armenian, Apostolic, Roman Catholic, Coptic, Ethiopian and Syriac Orthodox Churches. The Holy Sepulchre's edifice is carefully divided into sections, with some commonly shared while others being strictly a particular sect. A set of complicated rules governs the transit rights of the other groups through each section on any given day and some of the sections of the church remain hotly disputed. Arguments and fistfights over territory and boundaries are not uncommon. One of the most significant areas or of this debate between these different groups is a small section of the roof which is disputed between the Copts and the Ethiopians. At least one Coptic monk at any given time sits there, on a chair, placed on a particular spot to express his claim. On a stifling summer day in 2002, a monk moved this chair, eight inches to find shade. This was interpreted as a hostile act and violation of boundaries, and 11 were hospitalized after the fight that ensued. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre also has an area, or a ladder, which is known as the Immovable Ladder. It's a centuries-old symbol of the extreme territoriality. During the early 1800s, a man belonging to an unknown sect placed the ladder on a ledge against an exterior second-floor wall of the church. Due to the imposition of the status quo and the fear of inciting violence, no one has dared touch it since. Excepting, of course, the time in 1997, when a mischievous tourist named Andy plucked it from the ledge and hid it behind an altar where it remained undiscovered for weeks. The ladder has since been put in its appropriate spot.
assurance and uh, safety. And this was signed by Omar bin Khattab, and also we have Khalid bin Walid, Amr ibn al As, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, and Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, radiallahu anhum. So this is the famous document. Uh, the assurance the, of safety given to the people of Jerusalem by Sayyidina Umar <laughs> Just now in Masjid Umar having um, a chicken uh, wrap. Um, just been in the church of Sepulchre. SubhanAllah. What a peaceful place and a beautiful place. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a place you can spend hours and hours. So, yeah, we're going to continue with lunch and we'll see you later. Walking through the old city is truly an experience. Coming out from the sepulchre now, heading back to the hotel, the sight of rabbis, of Orthodox Christians, of Muslims and soldiers is an interesting heady mix and then the smell of spices, incense and all sorts of paraphernalia relating to religion and then the light coming through from the sky into the, onto the walls of the old city it truly is a mesmerizing experience and the Via Dolorosa which is different stations from where Jesus was from the point he was sentenced to the point where he was crucified the final point is in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is found along this route and it is marked by different spots as to where Jesus stopped and the different stations of the cross and leading up to the final moments of his crucifixion according to the Christians which is the spot where the sepulchre is found So guys, this is the Hasunian city wall. It's second to first century before Christ. So you could see how old this is. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. And it's in uh, obviously a different quarter, as you could see. And here it is. That's that alley. And that's Via Dolorosa. And if you just go up further up this street here, you will lead you towards the church, holy church of the sepulchre. And it's Khan Azit Street, and here it's uh, Via Dolorosa. And if you're thirsty, you could always get some drinks. And here you are. 